Bon parler Les bambas Je veux dire, you never told me you were coming. I wanted it to be a surprise visit. Surprise? Yes. Well, what kind of surprise? <laughs> guess what? Something good has happened to me. Just guess. Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Uh, Raymond, I have no time for guessing. I'm going out as you can see, eh? Mm. Say whatever you want to say. I'm on my way to Victoria Island, eh? Listen, Dewale. I am now a deacon. I was one of the people that was ordained a deacon in my church on Sunday. Raymond? Yes? You. You deacon. Ah, Jesus Christ. Whoever made you a deacon, Raymond? Yes? Your pastor must be blind. Raymond. Yes. I am very sure your pastor does not know you. You see, because if your pastor knows the kind of person you are, you wouldn't have ever ventured into making you a deacon. You a deacon? Oh. Now you shall <laughs> uh, You see, um, anyway, let's leave that aside. Let's meet at our usual place tonight at the club. Um, the second surprise is I want to show you my new catch <laughs> from our church. <laughs> You need to see this bed, Raymond. If you can become a deacon, mm -hmm. very soon, Satan will become an archbishop. Now nah, you have him. Uh, Dewale, just make sure you meet me at our usual place, at the club. Shall I drop you on the way? Go, 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 go. Go, 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 go. We will see. Make sure we see tonight. Raymond Deacon. Raymond Deacon. I said it. I said it. Very soon. Satan himself will become general of Asia. Mm. Pastor. Yes. What I'm saying is that I love that lady. And I want to marry her. <laughs> Deacon Raymond. Do you understand or know the implication of what you've just said? Implication? What is there to understand that I love a lady who is a member of my church and I want to marry her and you are talking about implication? I doubt if you understand what you are saying. You impregnated a lady who is not your wife and you are insisting on marrying her. Have you forgotten that you are already married and have three children? And what has that got to do with what we are saying? What is bad in marrying a second wife? Oh, you, a decay? Marrying a second wife? No! I can't and I won't subscribe to that. The Bible is against it. And have you learned from the Bible that a deacon must be a husband of one wife? Well, Pastor, that does not apply to me. If I know this is what you invited me for, I wouldn't have come. I have so many things, to, important things to do there. For your information, I've made up my mind to go all the way to marry that lady. See, Pastor, nobody can stop me from marrying that lady. Not even you. Yes, and for your information, I would do everything in my power to marry her. Ah, uh, look, 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 look. If you insist in marrying that lady, then. You cease to be a dick in this church. Is that clear? <laughs> oh, well. If that is the game you want to play, I cease to be a dick in. And not only that, I cease to support your ministry financially. And I will collect... Hear me, Pastor. I will collect everything. Every time I have given to this ministry. Nothing, Pastor. To suffer the dick Make sure he's a pointed up guy. He must be freed of sin, not a fornicator. So, what can I do for you, Pastor? Uh, sir, I have a problem with one of my deacons. He has almost scattered the church. At present, the church is divided. How and why? 
he said he wanted to marry his second wife. And I told him no. I said the Bible does not support it. They remove him from being a deacon. I mean, at least he that has the power to hire must also have the power to fire. I tried it, but the decision is tearing the church apart. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. How did he become a deacon in the first place? Ah, uh, ah, uh, sir. It's a long story. Hmm. I was deceived by his generosity. Pastor, yes. I really thank God for your life. Thank God. Um, you see, I like your style and your way of preaching. Thank you. You are not one of the pastors that lay more emphasis on sin. Sin? Yes. If you talk or preach too much about sin, it will make people to be sin conscious. Exactly. That's true. After all, there are so many messages in the Bible. Uh -huh. Well, um, Pastor, there is something that I really want to share with you. I had the announcement at the open church when you said the other church needed a drum and some dozens of chairs. Uh, sir, I just want to let you know that I will buy everything. What? Yes, Pastor. May God bless you. Amen. That's not all. Uh, please, I would like to have your children's school fees bill. I would like to sponsor them to senior secondary school level. And not only you, I know that there are some members who are faced with a financial problem. Please, don't hesitate to let me know. I will also do the same for them. Oh. This is wonderful. Thank God. May God richly bless you. May God enlarge your course. May God increase you beyond your imagination. Repassing the air back. Father, give. Oh, thank you. He made good all his promises by donating generously toward the church project and helped so many members of my church. So, in order not to lose him and his generosity, I made him a deacon and a member of the church executive council just to tie him down. that he was dictated to do for us in the church. 
after some time, we found out that he was messing around with some ladies in the church. In fact, sir, he even impregnated one of them mm. and threatened to marry her. Mm. When I challenged him, he threatened to leave the church. Mm. Not only that, he said he will collect back all what he had donated to the church and my family. The problem I'm not having is that many people in our church are ready to follow him if I allow him to leave the church. He has become a power broker in your church. But uh, I believe the situation is still under control. Because at least you were the one that appointed uh, and ordained him. That even reminds me the story of one of my sons and the Lord, who inherited his own elders. Yes, I have an important meeting to attend this morning. But you asked me to come by 7.30 today. I am sorry. The meeting is very important and I have to go now. I'll come and see you in the church this evening.
Because if you do There will be a man in so mighty is your plea Where I go with you So far to They are your back. Yes. Any luck? I mean, did you meet the Helder? Yes, I met him. But you know that the Helder was already on his way out. Ah. Does that mean he didn't pay you again? Oh. <coughs> no. But he said he will come in the evening. So my children will not go to school again today. But why are these people treating us like this? I don't know. Be careful of who you are pointing to suffice the dipping of the church. Make sure he's a put out of care. He must be freed of sin. Not a fornicator. Ah, that food. Okay, uh, now that uh, we have concluded our business meeting, I think the best thing for us to do now is to go to church. Even if you have to get there before the benediction. Exactly. Hmm. I don't think so. Why did you say that? The pastor's salary. Ah! Pastor's salary? Yes. I thought you paid him. Pay him? Where do I get the money to pay him? I had to rush out of the house this morning so that he would not meet me. Yet, he still met me when I was about going out. I had to tell him that I will meet him in church in the evening. Um, that means none of us will go to church this evening. <laughs> that is right. But we have to find a way to pay him this week. Before the church member begins to hear about it. We all know this is the fourth month. Yes. Our best bet is to pay him the three months salary for whatever offering that comes in on Sunday. That's a good idea. That is right. <laughs> that is right. <laughs> you shouldn't have sent those two children home. It's not good. Exactly. That is the same way I felt about you. I wasn't the one that sent them home. It was the school authority. Yeah, but it's rather at least prevail on them. You know they are pastor's children. I tried, but the school authority refused. Because this is the third time. Moreover, we just resumed from meet and break last week. I come to think about it. What does the pastor do with his salary? At least he has just those two children. Sister Deborah. Sister Deborah, how much does he receive a salary? Eh? How much? Pastor is any good money. At least he preaches very well. And many people like him, even my very self. Anyway, maybe he has other commitments and responsibilities he spends his money on. May God forgive both of you. Amen. Look, there is no amount any pastor may be paid that will be commensurate with what God is doing through him. So, instead of we gossiping about the man of God, let's look for a way of helping his wife here. Hmm? That is true. Okay. Brother, bye bye. Have a nice day, brother. Bye bye. Thank you so much, my elders. Uh, the next thing on our agenda now is the workers' seminar I proposed last week. 
Since I came to this church, I discovered that many of our workers, they are not trained. And there is need for us to train them so that each and every one of them can be effective in his or her department. As a matter of fact, I've discovered that many of them don't know why they are workers and what they are even doing in the Lord's vineyard. Pastor, the proposal is a very good proposal. But I believe we should very good very well in it before embarking on such program. Also, this program will cost us a lot of money. Exactly. To me, the earlier we hold this seminar, the better for us. So that all the workers will know what they are supposed to know and be effective in their various departments. Please, 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 please. I want all of us to know that no matter how good and laudable a program is, without money, nothing can be achieved. Of course. Presently, we put service on our people. Any additional burden will definitely discourage them from giving. The workers uh, seminar, good. Yes, it's good. Uh, I'm of the opinion we should shelve it till towards the end of the year. When we have enough fund for the project, as the treasurer, I mean as the treasurer, I can categorically say that we don't have money in the post. You are unaware. Out of the three months salary arrears we hold the pastor, we've just been able to pay two months. That's true. The children are ready. Uh huh. Okay. Please, my dear, you have to follow them to the school to pay this money. And um, please beg the school authority to allow them to stay. By God's grace, by the end of the month, we pay up the balance. But you said you were paid two months' salary yesterday. Let's pay this school fees once and for all to avoid embarrassment. My dear, if we pay her, then we have to go hungry for the greater part of this month. And I don't want us to go hungry. You know we don't have enough food stores in this house. So please, just beg them. Hmm? Thank you. Children, God bless you. Hello? It's me, Pastor. Oh, Pastor, how are you? Oh, I'm fine. Uh, uh, please, Elder, I've searched this church office for the church financial record book. I can't find it. Ah, uh, I'm sorry. I took it along with me yesterday after the meeting to work on it and update the records. Is that so? Yes, Pastor. Okay. So please, bring it along with you when you are coming to church tomorrow. 
Okay, I will. Okay. Thank you. God bless. Hello friend, our friend just called to request for the financial records book. I told him I took it home to work on it. At the usual place? Okay. Please call him and intimate him. If a child knows how to die, his parents too will know how to bury him. It's like our friend is biting more than he can chew. Ah. He's not only biting more than he can chew. He's equally dabbing and cognosing into the sensitive area of the church. The other time I warned him against his hard hitting messages. But the guy will not listen. I think the best thing for us now is to stop him. As he put us in trouble. Never! That's impossible! Are we not the owner of the church? Are we not the one that said he should be posted to us? Where was he when we were putting the church together? Ah. The question is, how do we stop him before he puts sand into our diary? Simple. If he will not dance to our team, then we write to the highest authority to post him out and send us someone else who will do our bidding. We don't want to be too heavy. How? Bear in mind that this man joined us eight months ago. It's true. Hmm. Ah. We cannot and should not allow him to put us to shame. We already know he has started enjoying, you know, the interest of our members. Hmm. Another thing is, when is the container coming out of the port? Because if the consignment is out on time, we can dispose it within a few days and return the money to the church post before exactly. the baby goes. That's true. That is very true. The clearage guy told me the container will be out within the next two or three days. He says the custom officials have examined it. And it remained the NAPDAC officials. And I believe very well that you know how to sort it there. That's well, good. That means we don't have to worry too much. All right, all right, all right. Okay, yes, sir. so what's the next day now? We have to meet again. Okay. Yeah, come, come, come. Pastor, we demand an explanation and an apology for the announcement you made in the church this morning. Which announcement is that? The announcement that the children chapel will be put in place this week. Elder, I don't seem to understand what you are saying. Can you please explain? Why must you make such an announcement without consulting us? Moreover, there is no money in the church bus. No money in the church bus, or what did you say? Yes. Anyway, uh, Elder Callistos, as the chairman of the building committee, tell us how much was realized. Do the launch for the repair of the, 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 the children's chapel. Not much was realized. The people that came out on that day only made pledges. And they are yet to redeem their pledges. The elders have the list of those who have not redeemed their pledges. I think Elder Albert, being the financial secretary, will be in the best position to, to answer that. It's true. I have every detail on record. The elders have the record book so that we know where we are going. If I can have the list of those who have not paid, yes. I can visit them or call them so that they can be hurried up and pay. Okay. What about the church financial record book? Unfortunately, I didn't bring them along because I didn't know we are going to deliberate on it today. I want to see the two record books here tomorrow morning. And in the evening, 
I want to see all of you so that we can deliberate on how much will be released for the repair of the children's chapel. I don't think I'll be available because of my business meeting in Italy. Likewise, myself. <laughs> but why are you men talking and behaving like boys? For God's sake. Hey, woman, don't talk or address us like that. We are not your husband that you talk to anyhow at home. The fact that I'm a member of this executive council does not give you the liberty to open your mouth and talk to us anyhow. If you don't know how to talk and address men who are older than your husband, you better keep your dirty mouth shut. It is your mouth that is dirty. You do this good for nothing and useless man. Maybe you borrow the money again. After all, this is not your first time. Elder! Papa, you be let me come and beat me! Elder! Take it easy! Beat me! Useless man! Tu ne peux pas me taper! Parce que là, tu ne peux pas me taper, tu peux faire! Un faux pas, c'est lui pour rien! Tu ne peux rien faire! Tu ne peux rien faire! Beat me! Take beat it me. easy! Beat me! Dickness! Pastor. Please, take it easy! This boy has finished us. But why did he allow those officials to inspect it? He should have settled them. After all, this is not his first time. He said he tried to settle them. But they insisted they wanted to see the content. They took sample to the laboratory and discovered it was of standard drugs. And they pondered the container. But where is the boy now? Where is he now? You mean the clearing agent? Yes. We must see this boy. Oh. We must see him to warn him. Not to disclose who the importers are. He has gone underground. The Navdak official must not get him. My concern is the container must not be seized. We must find ways to settle them and secure it release. Another thing is how to handle this pastor. Who insisted on seeing the financial record by all means. Yes. Even some members of the church have started insinuating that we've embezzled the church money. Oh, eh? We just have to do something to cover up this situation. We have to do something fast. <sighs> How are you, my sister? I'm fine, thank you, sir. So, what can I do for you? Nothing much, sir. I've come to testify to the goodness of God. Mm, that's good. Please, go ahead, I'm listening. I was among the people you prayed for in the church on Sunday for healing. And by the time I got home, I discovered I've been healed of the strange sickness I've been battling with for over three weeks. Oh, that's great. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, the Lord is good. I thank God for your life, sir. And in appreciation of what the Lord has done, I brought this small provision. It's just bread and beverages. Oh, thank you so much. May the Lord bless you and cause your healing to be permanent in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, let me pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, Amen. I thank you for your daughter and the great thing you have done in her life. For these great things he has done to appreciate your goodness. May you be glorified forever in Jesus' Amen. name. May our healing be permanent in the name of Amen. Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. God bless you, my sister. Yeah, it is ready. Okay, my dear. Yeah, please, I need money to buy bread. Bread? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Ah, wait, my dear. I just remembered now. 
Somebody brought a loaf of bread and some provisions. And I forgot everything in the church office. You don't need to buy bread again. Let me go and fetch that one. Eh? It's all right. I'll be back soon. disappointed in you all. For the way you have put me to shame before the whole congregation. Over the issue of this, our children's chapel, you are all aware of the promise I made to the whole church last week. But one of you turned up for the meeting so that we can deliberate and release money for this project. Eh? But pastor, you made the announcement without our consent and approval. So it was a personal and singular decision. Whether the announcement was a singular decision or not, that's not the issue. The issue is that the children's chapel is in a terrible state. And if nothing is done urgently to put that place in order, some of our members will stop bringing their children to church. And as you can all see, the attendance has gradually and drastically reduced. Pastor, if you have informed us before making the announcement, we have no how to... Pass the information to them. Is that why you all decided not to attend the meeting that I called for Monday? And come to think of it, none of you attended the midweek service. And you are all elders and members of the executive committee of this church. But we told you we will not be available for the meeting. Due to our business engagements. <laughs> well, that's okay. Now to the business of the day. The Albert. Can I have the financial record book so that we know how much there is in the main church purse? 
and that of the children's chapel launching. I mean, the bad news. Yes. How much do we have in your hand? I have only the offering of today. What about the ones of the last two Sundays that you said you have not deposited in the bank? Do you expect me to be carrying cash about? Ah. Uh -uh. But I told you yesterday on the phone that you should bring the money and you said you will bring it. Yes. I later changed my mind because it is risky. It is risky in bringing church money from your house to the church. Is it not risky in keeping that same money in your house? Hey, hey woman. Don't open that your mouth to talk to me today. And then? Or else I will deal with you. Hey, there. As the pastor over the flock of the Lord in this church, with immediate effect, I want you to get up now, go home, and bring that money. This meeting will be put on hold until you come back. Ah. Do you think you can hold me around like a small boy? What do you think you are? Ah. Why are you so much interested in the financial record and the money in my hand? Do you want to combine your pastoral assignment with keeping the church money? Elder, as the minister in charge, I have every right to know the financial state of this church. And listen, I am the one to call the shots here, not any of you. See, come to think of it, where is our beginning to go about? That the pastor and the executive committee of the church have embezzled the church money. So, go home now and bring that money. No, I can't and I won't. Means what the members are saying about you and what the people are saying about you is true. What are they saying? Say it! That you always use church money for your personal business. Me? And if you think you can do that with me here, you must be joking. You talk to me like that. Yes! Ah, ah. Oh, hey, the What's wrong with you? You slapped me. Yes! If you say it again, I will give you another one. Oh, hey. Hey. Jesus. Nonsense. <laughs> what you just dropped? Hey! Keep your mouth shut, my friend. Get out of here! Because if you do, it's a good thing. Nonsense. Hey, that was too much. I suggest we go and beg him. Beg who? Nobody should go and beg anybody. Let him go to places. Next time, he will know how to talk to elderly people. Elder, you shouldn't have slapped him. Problem. Please get me something to eat. Okay. No problem. I will explain to you later. Hmm? Yes, my dear. Please. Peradventure, you had misunderstanding with someone. Please don't fight back. Please. Why did you say that? Because of the Bible passage that was laid upon my heart by the Holy Spirit as soon as I came back from the church. 
Uh -uh. Which Bible passage is that? Exodus 14, 14. The Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Oh, my dear. Hey. The Lord shall Sorry. fight for me. Hmm. Get me something to eat. So sorry. No problem. This is a terrible case. Somebody we saw yesterday, hail and hearty. Nothing was wrong with him. Just this morning he died. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Oh. This is terrible. My wife, it has happened. Don't wound yourself. We all are going to pay the debt one day. Sorry. Hmm? Sorry. 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 May the Lord encourage you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what? <laughs> God, what kind of a thing is this? And you didn't tell me beforehand or show me any revelation concerning it. God, why? Or could this be the way you want to fight for me? If so, then this is too much, Lord. Heard that dead? Just like that. Yes, come in. Good day here, Pastor. Oh, you're welcome, gentlemen. Please, what can I do for you? We are from the Liverpool Police Station. Your attention is needed in our station. Me? Yes. Wanted in your station? Ha. What for? I mean, why? Just for a shot, Pastor. A chat? I mean, I'm, but what's my business with your station? I'm a minister of the gospel. Pastor, you are wanted in connection with the death of one elder bad Monsignola. So, let's go. Is that? Yes. <laughs> okay. Please, can you just allow me to put a call through to my wife? Feel free, free, but make it snappy. Our dad is coming. Thank you. How are the children? They are fine. Thank you. Good morning, Pastor Mrs. Good morning, sir. I hope there is no problem. There is Elder. Ah, ah. My husband has been in the police cell for the past three days. And none of you has made effort to bring him out. Is that not a problem? Madam, to me that's not a problem. The problem at hand now is the sudden and mysterious death of Elder Badmos. And until you unravel the misery behind his death, your husband will remain behind the bars. But my husband has no hand in this death. So why should he be kept behind the bars? Ah, remember he's a pastor. 
Whether he's a pastor or not, it's not the issue. The fact remains that he's a prime suspect in this case. And until he proves his innocence, there's nothing we can do. Oh, this is not fair. Anyway, I know God will intervene in this matter. That's better. Wait for God's intervention. For your information, your husband ceased to be a pastor the day he was arrested. Ah. We have intimated people in authority to arrange a better person for us. What? Elder. Oh. God be judge. But dear, I don't think what you people are doing is fair. Remember, the man is servant of God. Woman, don't interfere in this. So, all this has been happening to you and uh, you and your husband have not bothered to get in touch with me. We are sorry, sir. But we thought it was something we could undo until he was arrested and locked up behind the bus. Mm. I want your husband to trust softly with these uh, elders. He said so. He even said you asked him to pray for the wisdom in dealing with them. Yes, I know such people, they are called power brokers, permission granters, and opinion molders in the ministry. And one we need a lot of wisdom to handle them, especially when they are inherited like your own case. You are right, sir. But we have never worked with elders like this present once before. Yeah. Uh, it's part of ministry. You come across them, uh, they try to control the pastor. The, but when we need to be tough and tender and be very wise and display a lot of tact and maturity in handling this uh, kind of power brokers in the church. Yes, you are right, sir. But please, I need your help. I have tried all I could to secure his release. All to no avail, and I don't know what to do again. I believe the Lord is in control. The Lord will help us. Mm. Have you set up any serious prayer for him? Because I, th I believe he will need a lot of prayers to get out of this situation. Apart from securing his release, I will try to go there. But uh, you two need some things to be done so that at least we can set up prayers that will secure his release because it's spiritual warfare too. Not really, sir, but I've been praying for him personally. I think that's very good of you. Uh, but your personal prayer alone will not survive in this case. Uh, you will have to go back and uh, organize people to be praying. I too will try to get people to be praying on my end here. Then uh, we'll see what we can do. But rest assured. The Lord is in control. Don't trouble your mind. That's why you have people like us here. So, try to see what we can do Thank to you. make sure it gets out. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Father, for your daughter. You, we commit this situation into your hand. We just ask that you take absolute control. Mm -hmm. Help us get him out of where you take him in. And help us solve this problem to the glory of your name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Just rest assured, sister. The Lord is with you. And you take care of everything. Amen. You're welcome. Brethren, I believe we all know why we are gathered here to pray. Yes. yes. And so I want us to pray fervently. And I know that God will surely answer us in Jesus' name. Amen. In the book of Psalm 68, verse 1, the Bible says, Let God arise. 
and his enemies be scattered. And let they that ate him flee before him. So we are going to pray like this. Oh God, arise. Let all the enemies of this church be scattered. And let all they that ate our pastor flee before him. Pray in the mighty name of Jesus. For that prayer i want us to pray again in that psalm 68 verse 2 the bible says that as smoke is, is driven away so let them be driven away as wax melted before the fire so let the wicked perish at the presence of god hey did you hear that as wax melted before fire so let the wicked perish at the presence of god so we're going to pray like this again that all oh god arise let all the evil people in this church be scattered. Pray in the mighty name of Jesus. of that psalm 68 the bible says he delivered a day that are in bondage that are in chains and in psalm 91 verse 3 the bible says he shall deliver thee from the snare of fowlers and from noise of pestilence let us pray unto the living god that all god arise in your power deliver our pastor as you deliver paul and silas pray in the mighty name of Jesus. I went for his release. You know, I've been begging and pleading since yesterday. Please, no worry. I said I've had you. But the time to grant your request is not ripe yet. But, let me believe not now. Remember the dream I shared with you the other day? Which dream? That I saw you fighting with someone, the person, the person beat you up and set you on fire. Can't you understand? No. Not me. Huh? I reject it in Jesus' name. It's not my portion. Look, woman, if you don't have good dreams to share, keep your mouth shut and keep out of this matter. Allow what happened to her, the bad must to happen to my husband.
degrees to my Yes, Pastor. What is it? Why are you shouting my name like that? Do you think this is your church where you do shout and hola? I, I'm sorry. I just received a revelation concerning you. Me? Yes. Revelation? You must be joking. Ah. I, I'm serious. And it's very urgent. <laughs> let's, see, let's see what you have to say. Uh, Please, I'm sorry. I will relay it exactly the way it was shown to me. Go ahead. I'm listening. But be fast about it. Don't be offended. I saw somebody giving you a large sum of money and a digger to help him dig a pit and bury someone alive inside it. Reluctantly, you accepted. And uh, you began to dig. As soon as you finished digging, suddenly your legs slipped and you fell into the same pit you have dug. Amazingly, it was the same person who gave you the job that covered you up inside that pit and began to laugh. So please, officer, but adventure, anybody gives you an assignment or a job to do that will make you betray the, the, the trust of the police force. Please, don't accept. I pray you will not work against yourself. Amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Mm. What's the matter? I hope there's no problem. Chief, there's no problem. It's just that I don't think I can do the job again. Why? If it's your balance you want, I promise I will pay you as soon as the task is accomplished. No, Chief. I can no longer do it. Honestly, I've not been my research since you gave me the money. My conscience has been troubling and pricking me. So, What's going to happen now? Nothing that for me to return your money. Here is your 100,000 naira. You can look for somebody else to do it. I don't want to have it and in the debt of an anointed man of God. Who is an anointed man of God? That good for nothing, rich. Huh? Chief, you call a man of God a witch? Or what did you say? Why? He's a witch. He used his witchcraft to kill the bad ones. If he's not a witch, why should the other bad must die the very day he had a misunderstanding with him? But she, you know that cannot be proved legally. I know. That is why I have contacted you to help us finish him. You can poison him, or put him to death, or throw him in the middle of it. That man has been a clog in the wheel of our church progress. If you want me to add to the money, that we can discuss after you've done the job. No, Chief. Count me out. As for me, I can't do it. You can look for someone else to do it. <laughs> look here, young man. It's too late for you now to back out of this. Hmm. Too late. No matter how long you have done the wrong way, it is not too late to return, mind you. <laughs> you must be kidding. You will carry out this assignment for me, else you are out of the police force. Well, is that a threat or what? It is not a mere threat. You know how influential I am in the society. 
I only need to make one or two phone calls. And the rest becomes history. Thank you. You can go ahead and make your numerous calls for information. All our discussions are on tape. What? <laughs> is not around, but the assistant said we should bring him. So, he's still in this terrible state. Yes, sir. So. Yes, so. yes, so. <sighs> alright, he's alright. Yeah. Elder, good afternoon. Good afternoon, doctor. Have you come to carry him? No, not yet. And by the way, what of the pastor of the church? I expect him to have visited him since he was brought here. You know our pastor? Yes. Uh, uh, he traveled. He is not around. Traveled? Not around? Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, doctor. Okay. Just make sure you carry him to the church. Okay. Excuse me. We will do that. Thank you. Touch knows my anointing. Do you know my prophet? Touch knows my anointing. Do you know my prophet? Touch knows my anointing. In Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Ah, Father, in the name of Jesus, I command every evil hand working against your health be cut off right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. And I decree that the mighty hand of God bring total and perfect health to your body, soul, and spirit in Jesus' In Jesus' name. Amen. Madam. Yes, sir. Your husband and some people have offended someone that they should not have offended. What? That is what the Spirit of God just told me now. And unless they sincerely apologize and ask for forgiveness, he will die. And others will follow. Huh? Dead? Ah. Man of God. 
help me. My husband must not die. Helga, are you looking at me? Whom did you and your friend of faith? We didn't obey everybody. Are you sure? Yes. Please, my father must not die. Please help us. Are you saying the spirit of God is lying? I am sorry for all of you involved in this conspiracy. Remember, the Bible says in Psalm 105, verse 14 and 15, He suffered no man to harm them. He reproved kings for their sake, saying, Touch not my anointed, and do my prophets no harm. Thus saith the Lord, because you have joined in this conspiracy against my house and my servant, you will be punished, and my judgment will fall upon you. Please, man of God, I don't want him to die. Madam. You have to find the person your husband has offended. Oh. He is the only one that can pray for him to recover. God bless. <laughs> Why did you bring me here? I thought you were taking me home. You have a divine assignment to perform here and it's very, very crucial. Divine assignment? Yeah. I don't understand. Uh, you may not understand, but the truth is that the other has been sick for one week or so and uh, it will be very good for you to forgive him and to pray for him so that he will not die. Dear, please calm down as daddy said. Please, dear. Okay. So let's go. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I thank you for this great moment you have chosen to glorify yourself. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father Lord, I pray that you will have mercy upon him. Amen. And heal him of every sickness and infirmity in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. For we know that you have done it. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Congratulations. I'm really very grateful for your support. Pastor, no, it can't be true. 
Yeah, stand up first. Ah, oh. oh, Jesus. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, sir. against you and against God. I'm sorry to have allowed the devil to use me and other partners I can to use against you and the church. Please forgive us. It is well. People can be so difficult and evil, even in the church. Ha. Yes, that is uh, some of the evil that power brokers are capable of in the church. Mm. And you have power brokers everywhere. You have them in the church, in the ministries, you have them in corporate organizations, you have them in government, everywhere. Mm. Even though not all of them are bad, mm. there are quite a lot of good ones among them. But at the same time, uh, we need to be very careful. Mm. We have to handle them with maturity, with prayers, mm. with a lot of check and balances. Mm. Because when God calls us, He calls you, and uh, we are the one that called them. Mm. So we need to be very careful mm. how we handle them. God will bless you, Pastor, Amen. and give you the wisdom to handle that situation. Amen. You are most welcome. Thank you, sir. It's a pleasure. Well, you have seen the film. And I believe you have learned one or two lessons there. The Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, that we must be, know how to behave ourselves in the church of the living God, which is the ground and the pillar of the truth. In other words, there are wrong ways to behave and there are right ways to behave in the church. Now, those of us who are deacons, those of us who are elders, those of us who are committee members, board members, trustees in the church, women leaders in the church, and those of us holding one position or the other in the church, we should be careful that we behave ourselves very well in the church of the living God. I believe that all of us must go for training as leaders before we get into all these positions because like we have seen, there are so many people who have been in this position and they have destroyed their eternity by the wrong ways they behave in the church. So we must be trained for those positions. Number two, as deacons and elders in the church, we must respect men of God. Now, even if they fall, they are not our servant. They are the servant of the Most High God. The best we can do for them is to pray for them and to support them and to assist them to become better leaders in the church. By so doing, we will not incur the wrath and the judgment of God over our lives. Then, for us who are pastors too, we should be very careful how we ordain people into position in the church. Like you have said, there are so many lessons for us to learn. Of course, there are pastors that inherit elders and deacons in the church. But so many of us who are independent pastors and independent churches, we deliberately choose them, either because of their money, because of their wealth, because of their position, because of their popularity, because of their fame. And we never train them, and we never instruct them, never tell them what to do and what not to do. And many of us, as pastors, unfortunately, we live wayward lives, so we play into the hands of these very people. And because of that, they do a lot of things to our churches. Today, statistics have confirmed that 60% of the problems that is stagnating churches are from power brokers, elders, committee members in the church. So as pastors, we need to be very, very careful. Let me offer you some suggestions. Number one, we need to pray very well before we choose people into position as elders, deacons, and trustees in the church. Number two, when we are ordaining them, they must have been properly trained. Of course, we recommend in our ministry, we recommend that you train them for nothing less than 14 weeks on different aspects. They should have been properly trained before we put them into such positions. Number three, when we are anointing them, 
The oil should not be on their head. Rather, it should be on their hands. They are called for service. They are there to support. So the oil should be in their hands, not on, a, on their heads, as some of us are making that mistake. Then number four, we should give them terms of reference. What should they do? What should they not do? What are their positions? What are their powers? What can they double into? What are they capable of doing? We should give them those terms of reference. And finally, we should give them a uh, termination date. If they are going to serve for two years or three years, this must be written in black and white. And most importantly, we must be praying for them and teaching them and training them. Because most Deacon elders, they unfortunately, we have helped them to become power brokers in the church. And they have kind of destroyed the church, destroyed themselves, and destroyed their future. And for everyone who is watching as Christians, we should be careful who becomes our associate, who become our uh, under leaders, and those people that support us in our work. Usually, God calls a man, gives him a vision, and that man calls others to support that vision. Let us be careful the kind of people we call to support our vision. Let us be very careful the kind of people we put in positions and uh, we give titles to. Because many times you can be a good leader and when you have wrong peoples around you, it will ne definitely bring your work, your church, your ministry into stagnation. stagnation. I hope that every one of us will take these lessons with us and we can learn it over and over again so that our churches, our ministries, our work can become better. So be on the lookout for our next powerful production. Until then, do have a lovely day.